Hey everybody, my name is Graham and I make videos about horse behaviors and riding and training and everything so that we can have slightly better relationships with our horses uh, to be more effective, get along better. And I want to do a little video demystifying a bit about a trainer named Mark Todd and he got caught on video. This is Lena by the way, if you're new. If not, you guys already know who this one is. Anyways, he went about uh, whipping somebody else's horse with a branch while trying to go about an eventing exercise. Essentially jumping into water. And some horses are pretty worried about it. This horse seemed to be rather worried about it. It wasn't long before he sent out some apology. And what I don't really want to talk about is why all the training aspects of it. We can cover that if there's, a, if there's enough people that want me to cover a training part of it. No problem. I also am not going to be showing the video on this video because I don't own it and I don't have any license to it. So what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description. You can check it out there. Uh, we'll go through it a little bit. But I did one not too long ago about Sarah Moulds as she got caught uh, kicking and slapping her horse. She ended up losing her job. She got uh, investigated and charged and so on and so forth. And we we're kind of wondering what's going to happen with this guy. He seems to be a rather popular trainer in in the racing world and in the eventing world and he seems to have accomplished a few things in his time. I think the easiest thing to say about him as a person is likely he's been doing this for a long time. It's not his first time, definitely not his last. And so I don't think we really need to address whether or not he is the type of person who would happily abuse animals. He obviously is. It shows. It's kind of a curious thing as to how this comes about on video, the, the people that are around him. And I want to concentrate on that a little bit because a lot of abuse, a lot of bad things that happen, uh, stop happening because the public does something. So just like with the Sarah Moulds video, the only reason she got charged is because there was a video. Somebody spoke up and then enough people spoke up after that. That's kind of what is happening now. And I do want to sort of stress that the only way that horse abuse is ever going to stop in the competitive world, in the uh, eventing world, in the, the, the rodeo world, or whatever world that you look at and you think that's not very good, the only way it's going to stop is if we speak up, if we start noticing and we start understanding why it happens and what encourages these people to continue to do it. And if we watch the video, so you check out the link and watch the video, we can kind of see how and why this man has continued on this path of training horses through fear. And the more we kind of get into horse training, we, the more we know through science that training through fear is actually quite detrimental. And we want to be able to work on the relationship that we have to be stronger, to not want our horses to be away from us, but instead to be with us so that when we go places, they'll want to go with us. Without getting too far into his training technique, what he could have changed, what he could have done different, obviously the hitting part could go. We don't need any of that. And I want to talk a little bit about the crowd and how the crowd reacted. And I say crowd as in just a bunch of his students, it seems. This is Gracie. She's got a lot to say all the time. Hello. <laughs> She's an Arabian and uh, she too wants scratches and will probably wander off if I don't give her any. I hang around long enough. Yeah, won't you? You're going to be noisy with me. Yeah. If we watch this video, we'll see that the times that <laughs> the times that he doesn't hit the horse everybody's quiet the times that he does hit the horse everybody cheers everybody claps and laughs and thinks it's hilarious that uh the way to get this horse into the water is by hitting it and that's insane to me because i accept that he is a chronic abuser he, he can't help himself he doesn't know any other way to train horses he knows to hit this is yoka She's an Icelandic and a little cutie. Uh, he only knows one way to train horses, that is to beat them. Guaranteed. I've seen some of his work. So we just say, okay, that's that for him to be accepted. And on the video that I link, actually, supposedly uh, the girl who released this video to them was, was kind of worried and didn't say anything at the time because of the position of authority that he is in. And that's kind of, this is Luke. He's on my shirt. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of the thing I want to talk about is how it's really up to the public to figure out how to talk to people who are in a position of authority, whether you paid money and you think they have high value, uh, to say, hey, that's not cool. Why'd you do that? Instead of way after. Although after is better than nothing. That's that sort of, what are you doing? What do you want? 
I come here just to put you in the picture and you're all over me. Don't let your horse do this. And so as we, as we walk through the video a little bit, I will explain why it's important that we speak up when we speak up. Because the whole video shows exactly when people speak up with the wrong message at essentially the right times. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about what happens in this video. It's a very short video. It's only about a minute and a half and it's set up just before one horse comes going through some water and they come through one way and everything's fine, looks fine. But expectedly, or I expect that the horses there had all kind of uh, been through the water both ways and this horse wasn't going through the other way. You're wondering who this is? This is Macaroni. <laughs> He's a quarter horse. When a horse goes through one thing one way but not another way it's very common and it's it's it just because you've done something going left doesn't mean you're gonna be able to do it going right or going north doesn't mean you're gonna do it south east west whatever one way then the opposite way it requires patience and time but there was no time given in the first 19 seconds or so you know that kind of happens then mark comes out of the or into the frame with a stick in his hand a branch torn a branch off a tree I guess and he's ready to deal out some fear you can tell he's he's probably going to do it and the first go that this horse has to make going uh over the jump part of going into the water he's ready to he, he swings a couple times I don't think he hits and so the horse goes through and the horse comes around for another round and you can tell he's ready to do something but the horse makes it goes through and then comes around for the third time. And on this third time, I think it's vital to look at the next five seconds. And essentially this five seconds is, is over in the, about the 121, 126 mark or so. The, the horse hesitates to go in. And you can see that Mark has switched sides. So we know he has more intent than he did. And he's really ready to make sure that this horse goes through again. The horse stops. And what happens is he comes in and over the next 10 seconds, he whips the horse on its back end once per second. Did you hear that? Once per second, he whipped that horse right in the butt. And that's a big deal. 10 times. Now everybody has commented on me. I can't believe he hit the horse 10 times. And I too think that it's absolutely incredible. The horse goes in, the lady makes it through, and supposedly she had not given him any permission whatsoever to deal with her horse in such a manner, but she had accepted it at the time instead of stopping or jumping off her horse because, well, that's kind of what you do with your teachers in the horse world. Become sort of afraid, especially a high-end horse trainer like that, maybe. Everybody laughed. Now we'll rewind a little bit and we'll look at the second time the horse goes through where Mark didn't have to do anything other than sort of step forward a bit to give the intent that he's going to do something. The horse went in the water, nobody laughed, nobody cheered. And the first time when he chased after it, he didn't whip the horse, I don't believe he did, but he swished quite, quite aggressively a couple times. Horse went in, everybody laughed and cheered. The psychology of the crowd is very, very important. If we think about it, if it was the exact opposite, if everybody laughed and cheered when the horse went in through no external pressure from somebody with a, a whip, we'll call it a whip for now, because it essentially is a branch, is a swishy branch, and we could call it a whip, no problem. If everybody cheered at that point, but the other two times when he swished and he tried to, he gave every intent that he was going to hit that horse on the first one. If everybody's like, hey, that's not cool, don't do that. And then on the last attempt where he whipped that horse 10 times, instead of getting the rousing cheer and laugh of everybody, if everybody said, that's not cool, man, don't ever do that again, that's horse abuse. Imagine how we could change the horse world if the public, the students, the people who are part of the world, just like with, with Sarah Moulds, just like in the Olympics with uh, Anika, I can't remember her last name, but just like her, when, when everybody is watching and they say, that's not cool, that's not acceptable. And so demystifying horse abuse doesn't mean that we just sort of go after those that are doing it. But we have to also kind of ask questions about those that enable it, encourage it, cheer it on, and make it normalized. So now it's up to us, the public, to speak up because there's evidence now. And that's the only reason this guy's apologized. And I'm going to kind of conclude here. But I can say for sure that there's no way he would have apologized because in the video there was no chance that he gave this horse at all to just take a break. Make it through the first time, good job. Let's everybody say thank you and it's terrific and, and this horse is amazing. 
And on the second time when it made it through, nobody was like, oh, that's really awesome. Let's just take a short break and have the horse think it through, have the human think it through, maybe go through slower. Nothing. On the third time, he definitely wasn't putting the stick down and wandering over and saying, I'm really sorry I had to put that much pressure on the horse. Uh, that's really tough. Let's hope we never have to do that again. None of that. And nobody there said anything either. And it's really, really important that we, as the public, speak up and just say, no more of that. That won't do. That's not how we talk to horses. That's not how we communicate with horses. That's not how we make a friend. And for everybody, I'll say at the very end, everybody who says, that's no problem. Horses can handle that without issue whatsoever. Well, maybe that's the case. Maybe they can handle it. They're not bleeding, right? Maybe they're not limping afterwards or something like that. I don't know what the bar is for these people that say that's totally cool. Let's accept that. But we can say with 100% certainty that that is a training method that 100% employs predator fear response in the horse to get the job done. And that is wrong. Anyways, that's it for me. I wanted to sort of talk a little bit about that. Mr. Wild and I have things to do today and we're going to get on with that. So hopefully it's been interesting. If anybody has any comments, of course, please let me know anytime. Any questions, I will be happy to answer them and I will see you guys in the next one.